car coming on. Twin engine multi roll combat proven strike fighter built by Boeing Company. That'll be with the afterburner in, as per when he took off. So we'll see up to 35 degrees angle of attack. Now I think coming around, leading the speed off, pulling a load of G, that's a good way of washing the speed off to come around for a high angle of attack pass. This is going to come past at 33 zero degrees angle of attack and around about 90 knots, depending on the headwind, not 10 knot headwind, so 90 knots ground speed, 80 knots maybe if he's lucky, just hanging there, a short power to position for an inverted port. Fighting 
but now this is the one where appraisal will be made whether we're going to go from the square loop. If so, we'll be cracking the speed up shortly. It really depends on what Heathrow have got in the airspace above us, indeed the cloud. Nope, no square loop for us today. kilos of weapons on 11 stations on the airframe. Calling downwind to land on behalf of the United States Navy, the Boeing Company and the entire Hornet industry team. They would certainly like to thank you uh, for inviting them here to participate in Farmer International 2014. It's a great pleasure for them to come here and entertain us. Thank you very much, Jess. And Chapesses. It looks like it's meant for business, doesn't it? So now what we have next on going into traffic, of course. Now here is the Typhoon starting his takeoff run. around about 70% of the surface area. Metal makes up 15%, glass reinforced, plastic 12%. Typhoon has a service life of 6,000 hours for around about 25 years.
terms of performance, Typhoon, maximum level speed, Mark 2, low level, the aircraft will accelerate from 200 knots to Mark 1 in just 30 seconds. Service ceiling is 55,000 feet. From the inverted pass, I'm moving into the inverted pass positioning, I believe, for a high speed pass. Feeling the regs say 590 knots is the maximum, but then again, who's counting? Well, flight control committee, I don't know. The speed limit is 600 knots or mark 0.9, so there you go, it does get a speeding ticket. Wing over, coming round to bump towards the crowd into a level turn. on the fuselage, four on each wing. Weapons choices are numerous. AIM-120s, Meteor, Sidewinder missiles for air-to-air -air ops, Brimstone, Taurus, Storm Shadow, Payway munitions for surface-to-air missions. Starboard side of the aircraft is a 27mm Mauser gun. And here he is back, drifting past on a high angle attack, around about 110 knots, approaching at about 130 miles an hour, in real language, something like that. It must be the bit of both. Rolling down. 540 degree roll. Aileron roll.
straight away going another barrel, getting bigger figures as he accelerates. Space, but it does change all the time from this run, maybe pulling into the vertical. The cable will go from 100 feet to 8,000 feet in six seconds if required. And we'll see. Well, what an impressive display from a very impressive aircraft led today by the Royal Air Force. Fantastic Eurofighter Typhoon. Flown today by Noel Reese, local bloke, born in Hampshire. Flying the tornado. Oh, and he's got a dog called Toby, which I thought was some sort of joke, but there you go. Four planes, snow will keep it flying, so you can make a contribution at any time at the Avril. But now, starting the takeoff run, this wonderful, huge airliner from Airbus, the A380, starts his takeoff roll. into a very, very impressive flight demonstration. Using all the advanced fly-by-wire and the safety aspects of Airbus that you've now come to see. It's not an aerobatic display. However, it's not the sort of display you would do with Granny down the back with a gin tonic in her hand. For such a huge aircraft, I think you'll agree that it's a very, very quiet takeoff. And you can still see the weight turbulence uh, blown dust and gravel and bits all over the airfield and how long it stays the weight turbulence behind this super and it is a super aircraft this high capacity airliner made its first farmer appearance in 2008 the engineering project began way back 1994 june 94 50 aircraft came in the following year, in December 2000. Maiden flight of the aircraft was not so many years ago, January 05. That flight lasted three hours and 54 minutes, about the normal for Airbus first flights. A lot of testing to be done on the first flight. It was the start of a flight test program incorporating some 2,200 flying hours, lasting some 15 months. deck with a crew of two is located in the mezzanine level between two decks. They haven't got a lift to go to the mezzanine level. The virtual oval design of the aircraft allows four, allows ten abreast seating in the lower cabin, eight abreast on the upper deck. That's a typical three-task configuration of the 380-800 seats over 500 passengers. This version is certified to carry up to 853 passengers in high density seating, 853 passengers. And by the January this year, uh, over 304 had been ordered with 122 
A380s already delivered by January 2014. Given the commonality in cockpit design and flight control systems, which is what Airbus concentrate on very much, crews could be cross-qualified on both the 380 and other Airbus family aircraft. Indeed, many a pilot commentated that this huge aircraft flies just like the very much smaller, the A320. The A350 lying up, waiting for his turn to go. He'll be sitting there just for a few moments. Slow speed pass. Now, that doesn't actually look possible, does it? And yet, the speed that is drifting past this huge airline. At the end, I will come on, climbing away. Don't know we do high angle attack by last year. Rolls-Royce Trent engine rated at just over 78,000. If you have the 970, the 972, the bigger brother, 80,000 pounds of thrust from the Trent. Flight management system from Honeywell, Tireless provide the display. Options, well, the head-up display can be specified on board. Information systems allow the crew to call up additional information, such as flight manuals, maintenance tools, passenger lists, all of the lights gone out, because we have a different landing threshold. It's far more long and therefore we reconfigure the approach lights so the pilot can see very clearly where that is. Now he does know, well I think he knows, well he'll soon see the A350 sitting on the threshold. This is a very good time for a photograph of these two wonderful airliners as the 380 turning final, coming in, positioning for landing. And of course 350 there, he hasn't got wing mirrors, can't see behind him. So, this is the magic of theatre. When's he going to start the takeoff run? There you go, there's your answer. When the A380 is round about six to 700 feet, they call, there they are, and away the 350 goes. First time we've seen this at Cardinal, I think first time we've seen this today. the A350. XWB getting airborne as the 380 drifts across the top of the Swan Pub at the end of the runway. And look at that departure for the 350. Startling climb away into a bank as the 380 comes majestically down. derivative with longer range, better fuel economy, and much higher design weights, the use of advanced materials was planned for this, the aircraft 350, now developed of course. The project went through various re-evaluations from airline industry feedback, and has resulted in this particular type of aircraft, the 350 XWB, extra wide body design, three variants are proposed, the 800, the 900 and the 1000 series. Maiden flight of the aircraft took place last year in Toulouse in June and at the controls, as has been many, many displays here in many aircraft over the years with Peter Chandler, chief test pilot of the Airbus crew. Total of five A350 test aircraft to be 176 uh, passengers. 900 and 1000 series can take up to 315, 369 respectively. High density configuration if he comes passing his high annual attack, low speed pass, and it's up to 400 pounds. In terms of group, two pilots, eight and Many assistants from the A350 are derived from the A380, obviously. Don't want to redesign the spot, the 3D. A400M starts his takeoff run for another dazzling and sparkly display as the 350 drifts in over the top of the 380. This is the A400M.
wrong way to depart. That is certainly a tactical departure. So anybody sitting in the wrong way with a, a rifle would have missed that one, or even taken a more exciting than a rifle. So, uh, high greater climb, change where you're going, 350 coming into touchdown, big aircraft. A new generation airlifter which entered service with the French Air Force last September, already been deployed on operations in Mali and Djibouti. First of 10 aircraft for the Turkish Air Force has also been deployed. including Belgium, France, Germany and Luxembourg, Malaysia, Spain, Turkey and the United Kingdom. Means of reduction will be secured for many years to come of this aircraft from Airbus crew. And this is particularly the subsect Airbus defence in space. A big scaffolding pole above the cockpit, that's in flight refuelling probe. Thrust provided by four Europrop International, the TP400 engines, which are the most powerful turboprops in production. Helps give the type its remarkable versatile capabilities. This flies very, very well. It can go up to Mark 0.72 and go up to 40,000 feet. It can then land on short and unpaved airstrips close to the point of need, making it an ideal performer both on military and humanitarian missions. Indeed, the A400M can land on gravel strips as short as 750 meters and deliver a load of up to 25 tons. This is the third, number three of five development aircraft using the flight test program. Ed Strongman flying it today and tomorrow. The development fleet played more than 6,200 hours in more than 2,200 flights. This particular aircraft is over 1,400 hours. First examples of the United Kingdom's Royal Air Force, the German Air Force aircraft will be delivered in the second half of this year. And in service it will be known as the A400M Atlas. Last year the flight testing took the aircraft down to gravel strips. Charles down in Spain at Zaragoza in the heat of the summer to see what it's like in badly prepared strips of heat and rough terrains. I went down there and got some really rough stuff to play with. More recently, it's completed successfully the air dropping of loads of up to four tons from its ramp at trials near Toulouse in France. Steep climb, a bit like the 380, and now a push over and push and push and push. That must be exciting standing behind the, the two pilots. Not that there's anybody doing that at the moment. Flying control committee will have kittens if they do that exactly. So pulling downwind. The 350 is still out on the runway, so we might get another little extra time from the 400. I think we're running nicely on time. We do have the buffer for a helicopter departure slot if required for a VIP helicopter departure slot, but I don't see any helicopter. Uh, with his rotors running in that particular area. We have two heli bolts here at Farnborough. I think we can get some more flybys here, which is fine by me. There's maximum payload on board, 37 tonnes, nearly twice the payload of other tactical airliners and airlifters. The A400M can fly non-stop over 1,780 nautical miles. Our as far as 3,450 miles. Long distances, you can, and high speed, you can have 116 troops. Very sharp wing over there, seeing the upper surface of the aircraft. It comes around and steep descent again. Look at that. 
Lomachik down. Remember when it was unveiled, indeed, the term grizzly was given to this aircraft in the ceremony unveiling in the first Air Farmer 2010. It wasn't intended to be its official name at all. That's really used for the test aircraft only. They keep grizzly to themselves for their call sign. Because, of course, we're going to be calling it the Atlas. But you can see why they chose the name grizzly. I like that name. So it looks like the 350 will be nicely parked shortly. Primarily well, designed for carriage of troops and outside cargoes, armoured vehicles, helicopters, that sort of thing. Side stick flying controls, fly by wire, adapted for specific mission profiles. You can stick Super Puma down the back, a couple of Apache helicopters or Tiger gunships. You can put a Warrior inside. Very, very versatile indeed. And you will see a very short landing. Huge great propellers. On those Europrop International TP400s the Dash D6s. 13,000 shaft horsepower from each of the donkeys. And you'll see as he comes down, they will go into reverse pitch, stand on the brakes. And the idea is he's going to do a bit of reversing for us as well onto what was the old cross runway here at Farnborough, which I can't remember what it was. 06 would be there, so but on the 01, something like that, going up towards the fire station. So here he comes, touching down, farm along. And he's on. Brakes on, first pitch. The 
this aircraft uses something like 20% less fuel than today's similarly sized aircraft. It cracks along at a speed similar to the world's fastest twin of aircraft, around about 0.85 mark, something like that. It's got a higher humidity inside, which does make it more comfortable on long haul flights. And certainly going over 8,000 miles is certainly long haul. Coming back towards us, composite materials make up 50% of the primary structure of the 787, including the wings and the fuselage. Onboard health monitoring systems allow the aircraft to self-monitor board system and maintenance requirements to ground-based computer systems, i.e. back to your engineers at base. Boeing launched the 787 program in April, 10 years ago, with a record order from all Nippon Airways. 60 customers from six continents of the world have placed orders for more than 1,000 aircraft, valued at more than $240 billion. Twin engine 787, powered by either Rolls Royce engines, the Trent 1000s, or the General Electric Gen X Rolls Royce turbofan, flat rated at over 69,000 pounds of thrust at takeoff. Which is quiet, that is graceful. In terms of the avionics, Rockwell Collins provide the communications and surveillance systems. Tyler's provide the integrated flight displays. Honeywell supply the crew information and management systems. Avionics suite, based around the Smith's Aerospace Common Core system. Tricycle landing gear, supplied by Messier Doughty. Brakes, Messier, uh, Messier Bugatti or Goodrich. So you can see how many companies are all involved in bringing this sort of airliner together. Gear down. Runway lights are still on, so we're going to get a flyby with the gear down, unless he's not using the long runway here at Farnborough. Really designed to be a replacement for the 767. Indeed, I remember the 75 and 767 being unveiled here at Farnborough many years ago, and this is the replacement. And I guess that looks like a landing run, so he's not asking for the Long landing run here at Farnborough. Coming in over the swan. Gracefully down. When compared with the earlier 767, the weight reduction advanced aerodynamics will offer 17% reduction in fuel burn. Which is really significant. Hence, why the runway lights weren't off, because they didn't do touch and go. It's a little landing touch and go with the landing point. Well, 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 there we go. Don't often see airliners do a touch and go. Circuits and bumps. Unless it's raining, then it's a splash and a dash. Now the runway lights are off. So downwind to land. And that was remarkably quiet, wasn't it? When the power came on, on the uh, effectively the touch and go on the go around, uh, it was remarkably quiet. As I said, operational cruise speed, mark 185, which sort of speeds that uh, we fly the 747s at, so it all fits into the network well. This variant, the Dash 9 variant, represents a 20-foot fuselage strength, uh, stretch and a 6-foot span increase when compared to its younger brother, the Dash 8. 
Boeing has also taken orders for VIP versions of both Dreamliner models. That'd be serious luxury. Settling down. Oh, we just letting run the spoilers around on the top set of the wing to kill the lift. Rolls Royce engines on this particular version. And this is, as you can see, 001. The first one, and there it is, unveiled here at Barbara 2014. make his way down to the Laffins plane end and turn around to the far end then come back to be parked away in his roost. It looks aggressive doesn't it? It certainly looks fit for purpose. designed to be an extremely stable platform. Three hours endurance, all weather, day and night capability. Extremely versatile, versatile multi-role helicopter. Hot and high performance, particularly good. Low radar, visual signatories. Doing sort of awful sort of maneuvers in a helicopter. Showing the agility, strength of the helicopter. Low radar, visual signatories. It's got excellent ballistic tolerance. Some wings each can take two half points in all of the pilots, about 350 kilos, outboard 200 kilos, and the stations. To increase the missile, missile launch envelope, the outer pylons can be elevated two degrees to be climbed up to 10 degrees. In terms of armament, a wide range of air to surface and air to air missiles can be climbed, along with air to surface rockets, gun pods, grenade launchers. Has the ability to operate with laser guided bombs. So it's a significant improvement over the use of unguided weapons. You can see the cannon out the front, clearly visible on the snout of the aircraft. 20 millimeter, the turret is steerable. Helicopter's dual electronic flight control system with mechanical backup. The system also provides auto hover capability along with heading hold, auto stabilization, autopilot modes. The gunner position in the front seat has duplicated flight controls. So it'd be useful if he's a pilot as well. Each engine rated at 1,360 shaft horsepower. Licensed built in Turkey by Turkish Engine Industries. Sideways flight. 2007 saw this helicopter selected by the government of Turkey for the Turkish Land Forces. Development and production will be assured with the TAC team, joint partnership of Turkish Aerospace Industries and Augusta Western. First helicopter was delivered to Turkish Land Forces in April this year. Excellent situational awareness through good visibility arcs, fully integrated mission and communication system. Eased crew workloads through the excellent performance and agility that you've got available. There is another attack helicopter, or indeed this one, I'm not certain which, whether this goes back to the static area so you can have a look at it, or whether there's a second one in the static area. diameter 11.9 meters. Next 
maximum level speed, 145 knots in mission takeoff weight. Go up to 20,000 feet if you so wish. Advanced avionic suite comprises a new generation forward looking infrared sighting system. Integrated helmet mounted displays, digital cockpit architecture. Certainly got the latest fire control systems. Both the crew sitting on Martin Baker, crashworthy seats, which also contain a composite armor panels. And then in front, we go back down to land. 